Our next operation to discuss is multiplication. Now, it's fairly simple to say what multiplication represents, but then we're going to get down into some slightly more complicated ways of thinking about just what this means. Multiplication represents repeated addition. What do I mean by that? I mean 3 times 5 squares means 5 squares plus 5 squares plus 5 squares. That is, it means 5 added to itself 3 times. So the thing to notice here is that while the number 5 counts squares, the number 3 counts something else. The number 3 counts groups of squares. 1, 2, 3 groups of 5 squares each. So what we're seeing in this picture is 3 groups times 5 squares, and I'm going to add something to that, 5 squares per group. This word per just means for every. So every group contains 5 squares and there are 3 groups. If I have three groups, five squares per group, I have 15 squares. This is one way that the nouns work in multiplication. So these two nouns are the same. Three groups times 5 something per group, and then the something, squares in this case, is the noun in our answer. So more examples of this might be 3 hours times 5 miles per hour is 15 miles. If you were to drive for 3 hours at 5 miles per hour, you would travel 15 miles. 3 boxes times $5 per box is $15. If you were to buy something that cost $5 per box, and you were to buy 3 of those, you would spend $15. Alright, that's what it looks like when we understand multiplication in terms of counts. What does it look like when we try to understand multiplication in terms of length? And again, I'm going to focus on the same multiplication fact. 3 times 5 is 15. We could think about 3 times 5 on a number line. And the simplest way we might choose to do that is to just draw it as repeated multiplication. Remember, 3 times 5 means 5 plus 5 plus 5. So we could draw the length 5 and then we could copy that, add it to itself, and add it to itself again. But that isn't really taking advantage of the fact that this is the same number over and over again. Instead, let's understand it this way. Instead of adding this number to itself along the number line, let's pile these on top of each other. So what we're actually doing is we're imagining 
another number line coming up this way. And we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so what is it exactly that we're counting 15 of? Right, here we're counting 5 unit lengths, and here we have 3 unit lengths. We can think of 5 times 3 as representing this rectangle. We're counting then not unit lengths any longer with the 15. We're counting unit squares. When we multiply 3 unit lengths times 5 unit lengths, we get 15 not unit lengths, but unit squares. And again, this is another pattern that we see with the nouns in multiplication. So we might say 3 inches times 5 inches is 15 square inches, right? In geometry, this is just the idea of the area of a shape. More generally, I wouldn't necessarily need to have the same unit length on each of these sides. What would happen with the unit? What would happen with the nouns then? I could have, for example, 3 feet times 5 pounds would give me 15. Well, feet times pounds is foot pounds. What? If you've never encountered that term, that's an idea from physics called work or energy. That's a circumstance under which you might multiply a distance times a weight. So any time we multiply, we, in a sense, multiply the nouns. Believe it or not, this idea is also going to help us to multiply large numbers. How do we multiply large numbers? And I'm going to start by multiplying some very simple large numbers. I'm going to start by multiplying 7,000 times 400. That is 7 thousands times 4 hundreds. And when I do that multiplication, I multiply 7 times 4 is 28. Thousands times hundreds is hundred thousands. Oh, that's 28 hundred thousand, or 2 million 800,000, right? I just put this last digit in the hundred thousands place. Let me show you an example where the noun doesn't work out quite that pretty. 500 times 90 will have five hundreds times nine tens is 5 times 9 is 45, 10 hundreds. Well, 10 hundreds is 1,000. So 45 10 hundreds is 45 thousands. 45 thousand. Again, putting that last digit in the thousands place. 
Okay. Obviously, going to the nouns is not the easiest way to do this. To multiply numbers like this that consist of one digit followed by a bunch of zeros, well, we multiply the digits and then we total the zeros. So we had 7 times 4 is 28. Three zeros plus two zeros is five zeros. Five times nine is forty-five. Two zeros plus one zero is three zeros. We can also use this to multiply more complicated large numbers. If I want to multiply 625 times 37, well, this is six hundreds, two tens, and five units times three tens and seven units. I think it'll help me keep track of what I'm doing if I imagine these as lengths. So I'll have six hundreds plus two tens plus five units and I'll have three tens plus seven units. Six hundreds times three tens is eighteen hundred tens, right? So eighteen thousands. Two tens times three tens is six ten tens, so six hundred. Five units times three tens is fifteen tens. Six hundreds times seven units is forty-two hundreds. Two tens times seven units is fourteen tens. Five units times seven units is thirty-five units. To find out then the total area of the big rectangle, I have to add those up even with the graph paper helping me keep the places straight. This addition is kind of a pain. So in the units place I only have a 5. 5 and 4 is 9 and 3 is 12. 1 and 6 is 7, 8, 10, 11. 1 and 8 is 9 and another 4 is 13. So I find that 625 times 37 is 23,125. Now, of course, in real life, that's not how we do that multiplication, right? We might use the standard long multiplication algorithm, 625 times 30 seven. First we multiply each digit by seven. Seven times five is thirty-five. Carry the three. Seven times two is fourteen and three is seventeen. Seven times six is forty-two and one is forty-three. Cross off the old carries. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 2 is 6 and 1 is 7. 3 times 6 is 18. Add it up. 5, 12, 11, 13, 2. Or, depending on where you went to school, you may have learned a different method, 
This is called lattice multiplication and it actually follows the picture that we drew fairly closely. All right, again, we're multiplying each pair of digits. 6 times 3 is 18, 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 3 is 15, 6 times 7 is 42, 2 times 7 is 14, 5 times 7 is 35, and then we add along the diagonals. Here we just have 5, 5 and 3 is 8, and 4 is 12, carry the 1, 1, 2, 8, 9, 11, 1, 9, 13, and 2. And of course the third method that we can use to multiply these numbers is to just use a calculator. So 625 times 37, enter. Of course we get the same answer, 23,125. Which method should you use? Whichever method you prefer. For multiplying large numbers, use whichever method you're most comfortable with.